Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the fine art of the discussion group. Um, we've talked about how we can talk in the classroom virtually, but this is a little bit different. It's an asynchronous discussion. So I want to show you how good readers share their thinking about reading with partners or in groups on the discussions in order to expand the way that you're thinking and see new perspectives. We'll be sharing our thoughts and ideas, but remember that rules apply in the virtual world, just like the face-to-face -face world. We talk about netiquette a lot, but let's watch a quick video that will review the things we've discussed and the things that we will talk more about today. Most of us are familiar with society's guidelines known as etiquette. Online communication has its own rules and guidelines for etiquette. These are often referred to as netiquette. Keep these rules in mind for any kind of online communication, including email, discussion board posts, and other online contact with your classmates or instructor. First, avoid abbreviations that you might use when texting or on Facebook, like talk to you later, laugh out loud, or other abbreviations. Not everyone knows what these mean, and even if they do, avoiding them will help communicate more clearly what you really mean. Second, make use of the subject line. Imagine walking into a library where none of the books have titles on the covers. You would have to open every book until you found what you were looking for. If you don't give your post a subject line, viewers will have to open your post to see what you've said, so always give readers a clue about what's inside. Third, it's important to know that all caps is like yelling at someone. You probably wouldn't yell at your classmates during an in-class discussion, so please avoid doing it online. Next, be careful with joking or sarcasm. Since these frequently rely on nonverbal facial cues or tone, they often do not come across very well in online communication. That post you made was totally sick. It's easy for someone to misunderstand your meaning or even become offended because they couldn't tell that you were joking. Finally, be frugal with exclamation points. Overusing these gives a much greater sense of urgency to your message than it likely deserves. Plus, it can make you seem like you're yelling or that you lack maturity as a writer. By keeping these simple guidelines in mind and remembering why we hold discussions, you can help make your online course a truly meaningful experience for everyone involved. Now go discuss something. All right, so we've discussed most of these things before, but I want to talk a little bit more about it today. And I want to give you a little bit of an example. So when I come to school, I have to present a certain um, persona. I have to be professional. I have to dress appropriately. And I have to, I guess, look the part of, of a teacher. So this is my teacher look. It's sort of simple. Nothing really fancy about it. Nothing crazy. Um, it's professional. It's dignified. It's the way that a teacher should look. And that's the persona that I present. And in any job, you would dress the part of the position. If you're a mechanic, you're not going to go to work in a suit and tie. But if you are a lawyer, you're not going to go to work in a hoop skirt and beaded necklace. So every job requires certain ways of dressing. And if you saw me when I wasn't in school, you might be a little surprised because the way I dress outside of school is completely different because that's my personal life. That's when I'm around friends and family who know me, who understand me. Um, some of them are like me. Some of them are nothing like me, but they accept me for who I am and I'm free to express myself in the way that I choose when I'm not at work. It's the same with online discussions. Just like I dress differently for work and home, I also communicate differently at work and at home. And you should as well. I text my friends and use slang and gifts and emojis to get my point across, but when I'm at work, 
It's not professional for me to communicate with my boss or colleagues in that manner. When I'm communicating with people in a professional way, I have to keep in mind several things. First of all, I have to remember there should not be any slang or acronyms. In asynchronous discussion, your tone may be misconstrued. Something that I say might be misunderstood by the reader and they would take it the wrong way. Feelings could be hurt, people could get angry, people could be confused, or they might feel like they were misinformed. So I need to remember to use proper language and I need to remember to use proper things like grammar because when I'm writing, they can't see my face, they don't see my body language, and they don't know what I'm thinking. It's hard to read someone when you're not with them. The next thing I need to remember is that I have to put something in the subject line. Many of you don't do that when you send an email to me and I have no idea why you're writing. So I don't know if I need to open it right away or it can wait because I get thousands of emails every day and I have to prioritize. If there's not a subject, that goes to the bottom of my list. It's the same with discussion groups. If there's not a topic or a subject listed, I might not even bother to read it because it's like reading a book with no title. You won't pick up a book that's completely blank and go, oh, this is the one I want to read. So you need to be careful about that. Make sure that you're putting a subject in that line so that the reader knows, oh, well, they're talking about Harry Potter and I'm, re I'm doing the discussion about Harry Potter and I want to see what they have to say. So be careful about that. Make sure that you have something in the subject matter. And it's often good to put your name in there as well. Now, I know some of us get really excited and we type in all caps, but when you type in all caps, people feel like you are yelling at them. And nobody wants to be yelled at, honestly. So you should never type in all capital letters unless it's truly necessary. If it's really important to what you're saying and how you want to express it, then use all capital letters. But if that's not what you're trying to do, capital letters are often felt to be offensive and people feel like they're being yelled at. And again, none of us like to be yelled at. The next thing is something of which I am guilty frequently, and that is sarcasm. It's important when you're talking with people that you're familiar with that you know that it's a safe place to talk and you can understand what they mean and they can understand what you mean. But when you're writing in the asynchronous world, again, that sarcasm, it doesn't come across on the screen. So when you're communicating in an online environment, it's best to avoid sarcasm so that someone doesn't misunderstand what you really mean. And that person will not be able to read those nonverbal cues that you might be giving. So it's easy for them to misunderstand, especially if they don't know who you are. Using the sarcasm can lead to your message being misinterpreted. Now, the final thing I think I want to talk to you about today is punctuation. And punctuation is key to every type of writing. Um, it's very important that when you write something, not only do you spell it correctly, not only do you use proper grammar, but you use proper mechanics, punctuation. Because if you don't, you could be in big trouble. And here's a really good example of this. I have a sentence here that is punctuated two ways. The first one says, let's eat, Grandpa. So that means you're inviting Grandpa to sit down and have a meal with you. But look at the next one. Wait for it. I hope you understand what I'm saying, but I'll say it anyway. The second one says, let's eat, Grandpa. Now, I don't know about you, but I loved my grandfather. I certainly wouldn't want to eat him. So that little tiny comma right there, that little tiny comma makes all the difference in a sentence. Let's eat, pause, grandpa. That means I'm talking to grandpa and I'm inviting him to eat. But the second sentence just says, let's eat grandpa. Personally, I'd rather have a steak.
wouldn't you? So the thing to remember when you're doing asynchronous writing, which is the discussion boards, and we will be doing those, is it's not what you say, it's the way that you say it. Of course, what you say is important, but if it's said in an incorrect manner, people will misinterpret what you say. And instead of trying to understand you, they will automatically disagree with you, be offended, get angry, shut it down, respond to you in a negative or angry manner. And that's not what we want. So be sure that you're using all of these tools when you write, and we're gonna practice that in class. Ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely afternoon.